Alright guys, quick update on the progress of Dead Fuse, a 3D animated sci-fi web series that I've been working on all on my own. Wow. Anyway, I just spent the last seven months putting together a face motion capture system that runs on the iPhone X and that uses Apple's AR kit. And the AR kit is pretty similar, if not the same tech, used in apps such as the real-time facial tracking in Snapchat, that kind of stuff. So I had to jump on a Mac for the first time and figure out how to use the Xcode platform and learn how to program in a language called Swift. I wasn't really sure how to post an interesting progress video of all that stuff, so I decided to wait till I had something cool to show, and that's what this video is. So I'm going to start with what you see here. These are two characters I sculpted in ZBrush using this guy right here as a pretty heavy inspiration for style. And this is Crichton from Red Dwarf. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's a British sci-fi TV show. Super fun. Definitely check it out if you've never seen it before. You'll love it. Crichton's chiseled features here. I know he's an android, but I wanted to take that across, soften it a little bit, and bring it to all of the characters in the show. So all of the humans, all of the creatures, everything, they're going to have this soft chiseled feature to them. So let's get going and show the facial rig and the capture system so you can see these guys moving. So this is the face rig, I created it in Maya, and it's set up very, very similar to the body rig in the sense that it is a layered system. All of the capture data drives the entire rig itself, and then the controls are just layered on top so you can manipulate that data in a non-destructive way. And this rig is used to set up all of the humanoid characters and creatures in Dead Fuse. So it's gonna be shared across all of them. Let's take a look at some of these controls. These are pretty standard stuff. We've got a jaw control, eye target, we have individual eye targets here, so we can make him go cross-eyed if we want to. We can make him blink. We have an attribute that allows us to blend in and out of the capture data if we need to. And we have these motion tweakers right here. They modify the way the rig perceives the data. So we'll adjust the minimum and the maximum range for the individual joints. And it's basically a very fast way of scaling and shifting the F curves without actually changing them. So it keeps it very, very non-destructive, which is really, really cool way of working. We also have those motion tweakers on the jaw as well to change the minimum maximum range for that stuff, as well as the blending. The other controls that we have are these individual dots here, and they allow us to control the face and the individual parts of the face. So we can smush it, move the lips around, add a sneer if we need to, change the brow, to increase the, the anger or the intensity of the capture. All sorts of different controls that we can control. There's lots of those. We even have a throat control here that we can use to create some motion if we need to. So let's take a look at Mimic, which is the name of the app I built for the iPhone 10, and we'll run a capture so we can bring that data back into Maya. Uh, there's no feedback on the screen. I always found it distracting and it always caused my eyes to move around and, and kind of mess up the capture a little bit. And it also caused the phone to heat up quite a bit too. Uh, like this, it's really bare bones and just easy to use. So what you do is you just push the main button. It's capturing the data. It's a little bit of glare from... So it's capturing all the things on my face. And then I stop it. And then you can just go ahead and download the data with this button when you're ready. Or you just recapture it again if you want to. There's a couple of options on there. Uh, you've obviously got some just regular stuff. Button audio, all that stuff in case it annoys you. You've got the frame rate, 24, 30, or 60. And then the output type. Uh, by default, it uh, brings in the blend shapes and the anchor. And what the anchor is, is the head motion. So, so sometimes you might need this. In this case, I'm going to capture that because I'm not wearing a motion capture suit. And I want to make sure that the head moves as well when I show you this, because it adds a lot to it. So let's go ahead and do a capture. You! What are you doing in here? And you! Don't touch that! That's mine! Get out! Both of you! All right, so now how I can save this to the PC is really easy. I'm just gonna show you this real quick. What I'm gonna do is just click this uh, little icon here or tap it and we're gonna rename it. I'm just gonna change it to something more relevant. Let's call it uh, Get Out, that works. And we're gonna add a version suffix to it. So you can you know, continue with the different versions if you want or remove it. You can also add some shot prefixes to it, depending on what shot you're using at the time. So we're just going to save that. Then we can just pick Dropbox or whatever you're using, whatever you have installed. And then we're going to go ahead and save it. And then over there, you're going to see the, the data pop up. There it is. And now it's on my PC. 
So if we jump back into Maya now, it's going to load that capture data onto the rig. There it is right there. Get out 01. It's just a text file. We're now going to load on the audio, which was captured externally for now. And that one's right here. Just going to import that. Now let's give ourselves some time on the timeline here. 500 frames. Actually, we can trim it there because you can see where the audio is. About 315 should work. And starts roughly about 75 frames. So let's play that right now, as is. Super raw. You! What are you doing in here? And you! Don't touch that! That's mine. Get out! Both of you! So that looks pretty good. Now we recorded the head motion as well, and that's the anchor point. So we can turn that on through the head control. I'll just set it to one. We can amplify it if we want to. Let's take a look at that with the head motion. You! What are you doing in here? And you! Don't touch that! That's mine. Get out! Both of you! That's cool. I'm going to amplify that a little bit, actually. Probably something like 1.5. And now let's go ahead and pose this head a little bit. Let's let's make some tweaks here. Let's have him look at us. Bring his head down a bit. Uh, move his eyes up. Probably going to enhance the eye motion as well. Maybe let's put 1.5 on that one as well. Let's change his mood a little bit. Let's uh, bring those brows down. Give him a bit of a sneer. Maybe we'll bring this brow up a little bit. Let's take the mouth corner and we can either give him a smile here. We can make him frown. Can pull out that and get the uh, the neck being pulled there. That's pretty cool. But we're gonna go ahead with a, a small frown, a little sad. Maybe shift that mouth over a little bit. Let's see how that looks. You, what are you doing in here? And you, don't touch that. That's mine. Get out, both of you. So there's one more tweak that I actually want to make to this before I render it, and that is if you look closely at the teeth, they don't fully connect here when the mouth's closed. So I can use those attributes here that I mentioned before, the jaw minimum, and we can shift that until the teeth connect. And now they connect the whole time. I'm not 100% sure why that happens. I think it's just because the rig itself's default pose is closed. And when I started the capture, I must have had my mouth slightly open or something like that. Before I go on to rendering this in Marmoset, what I'll show you is I have the two character heads linked on the same rig here. So I can turn this off and switch this to Ray, which is the other character. So everything actually works with each character, right? Because it's all using the same topology. So it's a pretty powerful setup that I've got going here. So I can use all my different character heads on the same rig. So I'm looking forward to putting the rest of them on there. I'm going to go ahead and put the other guy into Marmoset, render him out, and uh, we'll go from there. You! What are you doing in here? And you! Don't touch that! That's mine. Get out! Both of you! Here's that same data with generic body motion capture dropped on. I created a crude shot mock-up for each of the heads, so check these out. You! What are you doing in here? And you! Don't touch that! That's mine. Get out! Both of you! I'm gonna tell you this. One. Last time. You roll the dice. The number that you get? That's how many spaces you move around the board. If you land on the base of a ladder, you climb it. If you land on the head of a snake, you slide the fuck down. Now pick up the dice and roll it before I lose my shit. So all the data that you see here is all raw, meaning that no F curves at all were even touched in any way. However, there were quick control tweaks on them like we did earlier. So overall, I'm just super happy with the quality this system provides already, like in comparison to the time and effort that goes into each capture. Sure, it's not perfect, has tons of room for improvement, but I really look forward to that process. It's been a blast so far. I can't wait to get the creatures running on this system. It's going to be pretty awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. Love to hear your thoughts. Hopefully the next video won't take nearly as long to get out there. So see you next time.